bro, this right here. Three nights in a row I've dealt with this shit right here. There's the fuel lines right there. What makes you think it's okay to just park and pull your curtains right there? I got a truck to my right. I can't get around. Three nights in a row I'm going to have to go wake somebody up. Last night I had to wake two drivers up. I'm going to have to go. What makes you think this is okay? It's amateur hour out here. Amateur hour, I'm telling you, man. everybody Eric here driveline worlds of case steering wheel holder um, I'm curious if y'all know if you're not a truck driver I wonder if you've ever thought about this not only is it acceptable for us to walk inside of a truck stop and get fully naked um, it's actually expected of us <laughs> everyone around us and if you're a truck driver everyone around you the rest of us expect you and hope that you will go into a truck stop and get fully naked at least a few times a week. <laughs> oh, I just had a shower. And uh, <clears throat> I couldn't believe, I could, I don't want to say I couldn't believe it, but when I got back out from the shower, and look, it's only, it's only 5.15 p.m., okay? There's two trucks blocking me in. I've gone out and had a conversation with them. So they're prepared to move when the time comes. But <clears throat> I'm getting really annoyed with this shit. It's really bad um, in like the Carolinas, Virginia, uh, and the Northeast. It's really like loves, loves over here just doesn't seem to give a shit. <clears throat> um... I mean, you know, there's some loves everywhere that kind of get that bad, but really in the Carolinas, Virginia, Northeast, any loves, they just kind of throw their hands back and there's, you know, from 5 p.m. until 5 a.m., it's just the Wild West, man. And it's not okay. When I pulled into this loves this morning at 5.15 a.m., there were cops here because a... Uh, a hotshot pulling a gooseneck had tried to squeeze around somebody else and tore their bumper off. <clears throat> so the whole place was gridlocked and you couldn't even, you, it was lined up outside of Loves. This is a little two lane road um, up here in the mountains of Virginia and there's, there's no way to like be like, oh screw this truck stop, I'm, I'm bailing out and getting back on the interstate. You had to come into this Loves to turn around. So all of us were just trapped out on the road until they got this resolved and they got this hot shot moved. And then I got into the lot and I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. <clears throat> it was so gridlocked that you could only utilize maybe, let's see, how many fuel? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight fuel islands. You could probably utilize maybe three of them this morning at uh, just after 5 a.m. It was so gridlocked with trucks that just stopped wherever they were and just pulled their curtains. And it didn't matter if they were blocking people in or if they were blocking fuel islands. There was one parked on the scale. It didn't matter. And Loves wasn't doing shit. <clears throat> so last night I was at the Loves uh, north of Gaffney. And Jenna called me when I woke up last night and I had to go pick up a load. Um, so I'm talking to her for like 15 or 20 minutes and then I open the curtains and I'm like mother <clears throat> So I sent her a picture and sure enough, I was in a straight back That I thought for sure there is no possible way that spot could be blocked No way the trailer shop was there and it was just like this has got to be the safest spot in this loves Sure as fuck. I wake up last night three layers deep night swift truck right in front of me and then two more trucks on the other side <clears throat> oh i was so pissed they all had their curtains pulled too so i tried 
I tried to get out. In fact, the guy to my right, he was sitting in his front seat and I went, I went and I was like, hey man, I'm gonna try to do this. He goes, I don't know, man. I said, yeah, I don't think so either, but I'm gonna try. And then if it, you know, if it all else fails, I'll have to go wake these guys up. But can, but I asked him, I said, can you flash your lights? I'll get out and look too. But as I'm working it, can you flash your lights if um, the tail end of my trailer looks like it's gonna hit the other truck when I come out? You know, cause I could see his lights in my blind side mirror. Cause I had to go right. I definitely couldn't go left. So I had to go right. So I start working it and man, like I didn't even get, I didn't even get to where I was even close to out of the spot and there's his, there's his lights, you know? So I go back there and look and there's no way, there's no way that trailer, my trailer was coming out and I couldn't slide the tandems all the way back so that I removed the tail swing because then I would be hitting the other guy's bumper with the side of the trailer. So I went and woke these guys up and you know, they were polite and kind about it, but I wanted to punch them. I wanted to punch them throats because it's so disrespectful to block other drivers in when they're in legitimate spaces and you aren't. It's extremely disrespectful. Now, if you do this, if you park in front of people, you may not think it's disrespectful. You may think, well, they'll just come wake me up. I'm telling you, for those of us, the professionals out here who plan and make sure that we have somewhere to park, other than the rare occasion where a load works out to where we're kind of screwed, um, but for the rest of us, it's disrespectful because I shouldn't have to go tell, tell you, wake you up and tell you to get out of the way. And oh, by the way, sit here and wait for you to get dressed, pull your curtains back and figure out where you're gonna move to and all that shit, man. It's disrespectful. I'm telling you, if you do it, it's disres disrespectful. Now I've bonus parked, I've created creative parked many times. And I'll never do it where I'm blocking somebody in. In the rare occasion where I do block somebody in, I'm gonna sit in the front seat and wait. Usually, a couple times, it's because I just need to wait until the sun comes up and some spots open up. So I'll sit here for an hour and tinker around, waste some time, and make sure that I'm available if somebody needs to get out of their spot. I am not gonna be the guy that has to be woken up. It's disrespectful, man. Um, anyway, rant off. Now, I wanna talk about prime freight for me. <clears throat> I am pleasantly, pleasantly uh, surprised at how prime, again, you know, user experience may vary. Um, but for me and my trucks, this past few weeks has been the best weeks of this year in terms of uh, being reloaded, consistency, um, especially this truck. This truck has just been, <laughs> dude, like it's honestly starting to burn me out. Like I'm just back to back. I've gone over the Appalachians like five times in the last two weeks. Um, and it's, it's just a grueling grind, but the money's there and the, the freight is there and the loads are there. Uh, so, you know, it's really, really strong. Rates, obviously, I would like them always to be better, but I'm getting some great rates. I got $2 a mile right now out of uh, South Carolina. And then I ran, I ended up getting some detention. So the load that I ran to North Carolina um, ended up paying over $3 a mile. Um, it ended up being almost $1,900 for 600 miles. So I am getting some good rates, but I'm also getting some not great rates. But the freight consistency, being able to get reloaded, has been the strongest for me that it's been this entire year. Um, if you all recall, four or five months ago, that was my biggest complaint. That's how I was just getting destroyed, is having to wait 24 or more hours to go get reloaded. Um, and then it started strengthening and it would be like if I, you know, if I dropped off in the morning, I would usually be planned on something 
late that night, which is what happened last night. But it's becoming it's becoming a little more frequent where um, if I drop something off while I'm waiting on paperwork, I'm planning to have to now drive, get a washout, and pick something up on the same clock. That has that I haven't experienced for a long time, uh, consistently. You know what I mean? So freight has been really, really strong. I don't know if it, I think it's probably some seasonality combined with. I do think there's a lot of drivers leaving Prime, and I think they're not hiring at the pace or bringing in drivers at the pace that they've been leaving, and um, that's probably somewhat intentional, um, just because of the economic times that we're in. But I suspect that um, we're gonna feel this strength in freight probably through the third week of December um, for Prime, because keep in mind, we're refrigerated. so. We're now entering a season where this country is just gonna buy a metric fuck ton of food. You know what I mean? Uh, so we're gonna be hauling a lot of turkey. We're gonna be hauling a lot of eggnog. Um, and just all of the above, all of the above. Lots and lots and lots of food um, here over the next six to seven weeks. So I don't anticipate um, I anticipate it to be pretty good for us basically through Christmas so if you're if you're a prime driver and you're sitting at home maybe thinking you'll extend it a couple days I would reconsider because take advantage of this time this is why someone asked in a comment why I'm out here running so hard and running so long it's because man I'm in a freaking rhythm that I haven't been in in a long time um, I am making stupid money right now um, that I haven't made in a long, a long, long time. And so, and Jenna, I was talking to Jenna today and she's like, well, why don't you come home for four, four days or so? And I'm like, nah, I'm just gonna, I want to believe me, I want to, but it's just not easy to go do a quick home time. So I'm planning on going home for two weeks, um, for Thanksgiving, but you know, I think what I'll probably do is go get a hotel or something next week and just chill for a minute. Just chill because I've been, I have been just going balls to the wall. But because it's because it's been so damn good. So, and I just don't want to break that momentum. You know what I mean? Um, because it's been so hard to get into that kind of a mo momentum this year. So yeah, I think I told her I was like. I want so bad to come home, but it's just very inconvenient. And going home for where I live, going home for a 34 hour reset is just not convenient. Um, 34 or even, you know, 72, it's not convenient at all. Um, so I think what I'll do is probably next week, I was gonna get a, go get a hotel somewhere and that way I can do my laundry. I need to stock my truck um, with some grocery this and that. And you know, and that's that way it's just a short, nice rest, get my laundry done, all that good stuff, and then just keep keep the momentum going. I do need to take a break and I don't wanna take a break in this truck. <laughs> I cannot do, I don't wanna do a 34 in this truck. Um, so that's kind of where I'm at. Uh, but you know, again, freight has been really great. I'm tired, tired of driving over the Appalachians on 77. Oh my God. I swear I've done this. I've gone over 77, on, uh, you know, Charleston, West Virginia, I think four or five times in the last two weeks. Four times. One, two, I think four times since a hurricane. <sighs> this is one of my least, least favorite drives. Because I got all those rest areas closed and shit, and you can't go over 40, and there's nowhere to park. Like, once you leave, uh, what is it, Wytheville or so, whatever, wherever Gatorade is, once you leave there to Charleston, your parking is, you know, it's just... And it's just a grind. If you're heavy, and I got 42,000 pounds in trailer right now, that drive is an absolute grind. I won't do it during the daytime. Mm -mm. I'm waiting on the sun to go down right now, and I'll go up there. But anyway, my point is, like, 
I've been I've been running, running, y'all, and, and running in ways that I don't normally typically run. I'm the I'm a low miles, high revenue guy. Um and that's worked out really well for me. It's kept my truck very valuable and um you know hasn't beat me up mentally, but in the last few weeks uh I've just been flat out balls to the wall um nonstop. And and I don't want to get out of that rhythm, you know what I mean? So yeah, it's been good. It's been good. I hope it I hope it stays this way through the second or third week of December because um shit's crazy, dude. <laughs> It's like you just want to take advantage when when there's freight, get out and run it. So I hope it's going well for you guys as well. Be safe, make good decisions, always drive, thrive, talk to y'all soon.